Hello, today we are going to solve the theory question of 20 to the 3 NECO mathematics. If you are yet to like this video, like it, subscribe, and share to your friends. The first question says P varies directly as the square of Q and inversely as the cube of Z. When P is 5, Q is 3, and Z is 1. Find the relationship between P, Q, and Z. This is a joint variation. And so the first thing we'll do is to find the, the proportionality constant. So, P varies directly as the square of Q and inversely as the cube of z and so if we introduce the constant of proportionality it will be p equals k q square over z q now we are going to look for what k is so that we can find the relationship between p q z we have to substitute 5 for p 3 for q and 1 for z into this equation so if we do that we we'll have p is 5 k times q is 3 square and z is 1 cube. 1 cube is 1. And so we have 5 equals 9k. And to find what k is, if we divide both sides by 9, we'll find that k is 5 over 9. And so to get the relationship between p, q, z, we have to substitute what our k is here. So we have P is 5 over 9 Q square over Z cube. Or we can write it as P is 5 Q square over 9 Z cube. Now to look for what Z is when P is 3 and Q is 5. So Recall that P is 5Q square over 9Z cube. So if we put 3 for P, we have 3 equals, and Q is 5, 5 times 5 square over 9Z cube. So if we cross multiply, 9 times 3 is 27Z cube equals, this is 25. 25 times 5 is 1, 2, 5. And so we we'll have, we we'll divide both sides by 27. So that z cube will be 1, 2, 5 over 27. We'll take the cube root of both sides. z cube, cube root. 1, 2, 5 over 27, the cube root, which is same as raised to power 1 over 3. Z will now be cube root of 1, 2, 5 is 5, and cube root of 27 is 3. So Z is 5 over 3. Question 2 says, the sum of the interior angles of a regular polygon is 1440 degrees. How many sides has the polygon? For us to solve this, we have to record the formula for sum of the interior angle of a regular polygon. It's a regular polygon implies that all the interior angles are equal. So the formula says the sum equals n minus 2 minus 180 degrees. Now we are giving the sum as 1, 1440. So we're looking for the n, which is the number of sides. If we open the bracket, we have 180n minus 360 degrees. So add 360 to both sides. This will be 1440 plus 360 equals to 180n. And if we add this, this will be 1. 800 over 180 n we divide both sides by 180 
And if we do that, 180 go here, we'll have n to be 10. The second problem says, find the size of each exterior angle. You recall that one exterior angle is giving us 360 degrees over number of sides because the sum of the exterior angle of a regular polygon is 360 degrees. So to find one exterior angle, be 360 degrees over one over the number of sides. So we have gotten the number of sides as 10. So one exterior angle will be 360 degrees over 10. 360 over degree over 10 will be 36 degrees. If we are asked to find one interior angle, we will recall that the exterior angle and the interior angle sum up to be 180. And so for us to get one interior angle, it will be 180 minus 136 degrees, which will be about 144 degrees. This is find the principle that will earn 29,880 in 15 years at 3% per annum simple interest. So we are looking for the principal that will be invested that will give an interest of 29,880. So recall that the formula for simple interest is principal times rate times time over 100. And so the interest is 29,880. We're looking for the principal. We have the rate as 3 and the time as 15 years, about 100. Of course, multiply, we have 2,988,000 equals 45p. For the variable side by 45, we have p 66,000. 400. So this is the principal that can be invested that will give rise to an interest of 29,880. Question 3 says the length of the chord AB in the diagram below is 12 cm with center O and angle ACB 30 degrees. Find the value of theta. I mean, this is circle theorem. I have done justice to topics on circle theorem you can check my channel for the videos to find the value of theta we simply apply one of the circle theorem which says the angle at center is twice the angle at circumference so theta will be twice 30 degrees the reason is angle at center twice angle at circumference so 2 times 30 is 60 degree that's all to find the radius of the circle we are going to draw a perpendicular this is 12 cm to we'll draw a perpendicular so since here is 12 cm here is 6 cm and since the whole of here is 60 degrees that we have calculated, here will be 30 degrees. So we are looking for the radius, which is R. We can use three trigonometric ratios to find what R is. So we are using opposite of a hypotenuse, which is sine. So sine theta we know is opposite of a hypotenuse sine 30 is opposite is 6 over r sine 30 is 1 over 2 so 1 over 2 equals to 6 over r so r 2 times 6 will be 12 cm so our radius is 12 cm and since our radius is 12 cm here is also 12 cm because these are radii so here is 12 cm radius is 12 cm too the next thing we are asked to look for is calculate the area of the shaded region correct to three significant figures. Area of the shaded region is a segment and formula for segment says 
area of this sector minus area of this triangle. We have gotten the area of the shaded region. So, area of shaded region is area of sector minus area of triangle. What is the formula for area of sector? That is theta over 360 times pi arrow square. An area of triangle that we will use because we have an angle will be half arrow square sine theta. So theta is 60 over 360 times 22 over 7 times 12 times 12 minus 1 over 2 times 12 times 12 times sine 60 degree. And so this is 6. 6 here is 2. This is 6. And sine 60 is through 3 over 2. So we are left with 75.428. Sixty two point three five three. If we subtract, we have thirteen point zero seven five. And the three significant figure is one, two, three. We are approximately thirteen point one centimeter square. This second problem say what type of triangle is this? Since the base is twelve cm and the radar at twelve cm, this is an equilateral triangle. Equilateral triangle. Question 4 says solve the equation 27 to the power 2x minus 1 times 1 third to the power minus 3x plus 2 equals 9 to the power x plus 3. If you look at this equation very well, you will see that we can put both left hand side and right hand side in base 3 make things easier for us so if we put 27 in base 3 we'll have 3 to power 3 2x minus 1 times because of this negative if i take the negative power of a fraction is to take the inverse of the fraction so this will be 3 to power 3x plus 2. And so if I put this in base 3, this is 3 to the power 2 x plus 3. From laws of indices, product rule, this power can multiply this power. We we'll have 3 to the power 6x minus 3 times 3 to the power 3x plus 2 equals to 3 to the power 2x plus 6. Also, from laws of indices, when we multiply two numbers in the same base, we add their powers. So this will be 3 to the power 6x minus 3 plus 3x plus 2 equals 3 to the power 2x plus 6. 6x plus 3x will be 9x minus 3 plus 2 will be minus 1 equals 3 to the power 2x plus 6. Also, from laws of indices, when we have two numbers in the same base that are equal, their powers have to be equal. So, 9x minus 1 have to be equal to 2x plus 6. So, if I add 1 to both sides, I will have 9x equals 2x plus 7. If I subtract 2x from both sides, I will have... 9x minus 2x will be 7x equals 7. If I divide both sides by 7, x will be 1. To check if your answer is correct, if you substitute 1 for x in this, you should have the same thing on the right-hand side, which is 9 to the power 4. B says, 
differentiate 2x squared plus 5 to the power 4 with respect to x. So what we use here is chain rule because we have a function of a function. The first function is a polynomial and the second function is the power function. So if y is 2x squared plus 5 raised to the power 4, we can say let the u be 2x squared plus 5. And so if we differentiate u with respect to x, we we'll have 2 times 2 is 4. x subtract 1 from the power, which is 1. And if you differentiate a constant, it is 0. And x to the power 1 is 1, is x. So the u dx is 4x. So since it's a chain rule, we now have y is equal to u to the power, since this is u to the power 4. For us to differentiate y, which is a which is chain rule, it will be dy the x will be dy the u times the u the x. If we times this, we'll get dy the x back. dy the u dy the u is differentiate if we differentiate this, dy the u will be 4 times 1 will be 4 u subtract 1 from the power will be 3. So we'll have 4 u to the power 3 times the u the x is 4x. We multiply this 4 times 4 is 16x. Our u is 2x squared plus 5 raised to the power 3. If it was an OBJ question, we can differentiate it directly. So we take differentiate the outside, which is 4 times this is 4, 2x squared plus 5 per 3. This is the actual differentiation. Now differentiate the inside. We differentiate the constant is 0. Differentiate, differentiate this. This is 4x. And if we multiply, we'll have 16x, 2x squared plus 5. Part three, which is the same answer. Question five says, in a certain school, the principal gave the analysis of the qualified subject teachers in the school as follows. English has 10 teachers, mathematics 8, physics 4, French 6, biology 12. Draw a pie chart to illustrate this information. For us to draw a pie chart, we first of all know what degree each of these subject teachers represent in the pie chart and so let's calculate the total number of teachers in the school total number of teachers will be 10 plus 8 plus 4 plus 6 plus 12 10 plus 8 is 18 18 plus 4 is 22 22 plus 6 is 28 28 plus 12 is 40 so this is 40 teachers. So in the pie chart, English will represent 10 over total number of teachers 40 times 360 because 360 is the sum of angle at a point because pie chart is a circle. So four, 0 can cancel 0, 4 can go into 360 90 times so English represents 90 degrees for mathematics it will be 8 over 40 times 360 over 1 0 can cancel 0 4 can go into 36 9 and 8 times 9 is 72 degrees physics will represent 4 over 40 times 360 over 1 0 can cancel 0 4 can cancel 4 so this is 36 degrees French 
may represent 6 over 40 times 360 over 1. 0 can cancel 0. 4 into 36 is 9. And 9 times 6 is 54. Biology will be 12 over 40 times 360 over 1. 4 into 12 is 3. 3 times 36 will be 108 degrees. Now let's sketch the pie chart. If this represents my diagram, Let's sketch English, which is 90 degrees. This is much easier to sketch. If we draw from the center, from the 90 degrees is much easier. Of course, you have to use your protractor. So this is English. You don't need to have right 90 degrees because this already represents 90 degrees. The next is mathematics. Mathematics is 72 degrees. You have to use your protractor. If you're using your protractor, you place, you invert your protractor, you place the straight line along this, you read from zero, the one counting from zero, and when you get to 72 degrees, you put a point and then draw it. You draw it. This is mathematics. Seventy-two degrees. The next is physics. What do you do? You take your protractor. You invert it. You place the straight line here facing this side. You read from zero to thirty-six. And so thirty-six will be around here. And this is physics. 36 degree. That is this. The next is French. 54 degree. Same thing. You place your protractor here. The straight line goes like this. You read from 0 to 54 degree. You sketch. So, this is French, 54 degrees, and the last is biology, which is 108 degrees. So, this is the pie chart that represents the subject and the number of teachers. The next is if two teachers are to represent the school in a workshop, what is the probability that both will come from either physics or biology? So the probability of physics or biology, because it's all we saw, the probability of physics will be 4 over 40, or probability of biology will be 12 over 40. Since they are the same base, 4 plus 12 is 16 over 40. 8 can go. 8 here is 2. 8 here is 5. So the probability is 2 over 5. For question C, is, it says if 135 base K equals 231 base 4, Find the value of k. What we have to do is to convert 135 in base k to base 10 and 231 in base 4 to base 10. Then find what k is. So 135 in base k to base 10 will be will times this times k to the power of 0, 1, 2. So 1 times k square plus 3 times k to the power 1 plus 5 times k to the power 0 
equals if we convert this to base 10 to be 2 this is 0 1 2 times 4 because we are in base 4 to power 2 plus 3 times 4 to power 1 plus 1 times 4 to power 0 so and this is 2 3 1 base 4 so here we have k square plus 3k plus 5 equals 4 square is 16 and 16 times 2 is 32 plus 3 times 4 is 12 4 to power 0 is 1 1 times 1 is 1 32 plus 12 is 44 plus 1 is 45 and so we have k square plus 3k plus 5 subtract 45 from both sides minus 45 equals 0 k square plus 3k 5 minus 45 is minus 40 equals 0 look for two numbers that will multiply to get minus 40 and if we add them we will get 3 those two numbers will be 8 times 5 8 times 5 because 8 times minus 5 is minus 40 and 8 minus 5 is 3. So we we'll have k square in place of 3k, we we'll have 8k minus 5k minus 40 equals 0. What's common here is k and we we'll have k plus 8. What's common here is minus 5. We we'll have k plus 8 equals 0. We we'll factorize k plus 8. K plus 8. What we are left with here is k and here is minus 5 equals 0. It's either this is 0 or this is 0. So k will be minus 8 or 5. But k cannot be negative because we don't have negative base. Therefore, k equals 5. B says a sector of a circle of radius 21 cm has an angle of 120 degrees at the center. Calculate its perimeter. Perimeter of a sector is theta over 360 times 2 pi arrow. We are giving theta as 120 over 360 times 2 times 22 over 7. Our radius is 21. 120 can go 360 three times. 7 can go 21 three times. 3 can cancel 3. And we are left with 2 times 22. So, what about the area? The formula for area says theta over 360 times area of a circle, pi r square. Theta is 120 degrees. 360, 22 over 7 times 21 times 21. 120 can go 360 3 times. 7 can go 21 3 times. 3 can cancel 3. And we have 22 times 21, which is 462 centimeter square. C says simplify 3 over root. 5 plus root 2 minus 1 over root 5 minus root 2. We do it as normal algebraic simplification. The LCM is root 5 plus root 2 multiplying root 2 root 5 minus root 2. If this go into this, we're left with this. This multiply this. This is 3 root 5 minus root 2 minus. If this go into this, we are left with this. Multiply this, we have root 5 plus root 2. We open the bracket, we have 3 root 5 minus 3 root 2 minus root 5 minus root 2 over. This is difference of 2 square. And from difference of 2 square, this will be root 5 square minus root 2 square. 3 root 5 minus root 5 is 2 root 5 
minus 3 root 2 minus root 2 is minus 4 root 2. Root 5 square is 5. And root 2 square is 2. 5 minus 3 is 2. So we are left with 2 root 5 minus 4 root 2 over 3. This is the answer. Question 7 says, the sum of the ages of a man and his daughter is 60 years. Six years ago, the man's age was thrice that of his daughter. Find their present ages. Let's start by saying, let M and D represent the present ages of the man and his daughter. So their sum is 60 years so that M plus D equals 60 years. Six years ago, So, daughter, six years ago, was D minus six, and the man, six years ago, was M minus six. The man's age was thrice that of his daughter's age. So, the man's age was three times daughter's age. So, we are asked to look for their present age, which is M and D. We solve this, we have M minus 6 equals 3D minus 18. If we add 6 to both sides and subtract 3D from both sides, we have M minus 3D equals 6 minus 18 is minus 12. So we have to solve these two together and m plus d is 60. We can eliminate m by subtracting equation 1 from equation 2. If we subtract, m minus m is 0, d minus minus d, 3d is 4d, 16 minus minus 12 is 72. So that 4d equals 72 by the Bible side by 4, d will be 132 is 8, d will be 18. And so from m plus d equals 60, m will be 60 minus 18. So the further age will be. 42 years. So the man's age is 42 years. Data's age is 18 years. B says find the equation whose roots are minus 3 over 4 and 5 over 6. We are going to use, say, let alpha and beta represent the root. So that if alpha is minus 3 over 4, beta is 5 over 6, alpha plus beta is minus 3 over 4 plus 5 over 6. So if we sum this, the LCM is 12. 4 into 12 is 3. 3 times minus 3 is minus 9. So 6 into 12 is 2, 2 times 5 is 10, 10 minus 1 is 1 over 12. Their product, alpha beta, will be minus 3 over 4 times 5 over 6. 3 can cancel 6 2 times, so we have minus 5 over 8. So we recall the formula for the equation which is, s square minus the sum of the root 
x plus the product equals zero. X square minus the sum of the root is one over twelve. So one over twelve x and the product is minus five over eight minus five over eight equals zero. So if we multiply through by twenty four, which is the LCM, we have twenty four x square. 24 multiply this 12 will cancel 24 will have minus 2x and this 8 will cancel 24 3 times minus 15 equals 0. So this is the quadratic equation whose root are minus 3 over 4 and 5 over 6. C says evaluate this. If we subtract this, 1 minus 144 over 169 is 169 times 1 is 169 minus 144 which is 25. So we we'll have 4, 25 over 169, raised to the power 1 over 2 times 2 over 3 to negative inverse is inverting this to be 13 over 2 to the power 1. And so this is same as square root. Square root of 25 is 5, and square root of 169 is 13 times 13 over 2. 13 can cancel 13. 2 can cancel 4 2 times. And so we we'll have 2 times 5 is 10. So this is 10. Question A says evaluate without using tables. 5 log 2 plus log 40 minus log 12.8. When you are giving logarithm like this without a specified base, the base is assumed to be base 10. From laws of logarithm, this that is in front of log 2 have to go to the power. So we have log 2 to the power 5 plus log 40 minus log 12.8. From laws of logarithm, when we add two logarithm is the same as taking the log of the multiplication of their numbers and when we subtract, we divide. So I can compress this thread to be, since they are the same base, log 2 to the power 5 times 40 over 12.8. And so if I simplify this, this is log 2 to the power 5 is 32 times 40 over 12.8. If we simplify this, we'll have 100. So this is log 100. Since the base is not specified, and when base is not specified, it's assumed to be base 10. So log 10 to power 2, which is 100. So this is the same as 2 log 10 to base 2. Log, log to a number to the same base is 1. So this is 2 times 1 and this is 2. B says find the equation of a curve which passes through the point minus 2, 5 and has a gradient of 6x squared plus 8x minus 3 at any point on the curve. So the equation we are looking for has this as its gradient at any point on the curve and this is a particular point in the curve. So we have to integrate this to get the equation of the curve. So, equation of curve will be integral of 6x squared plus 8x minus 3, the x. So, if we integrate this, it will be 6x cubed over 3 plus 8x squared over 2 minus 3x. 3 into this, this is 4, this is 2. So we have 2 plus k, constant of integration, 2x cubed plus 4x squared minus 3x plus k. So since this is a point in the curve, we are going to substitute this into this. So if this is y, minus 2 for x and 5 for y to find what k is. And if we do that, we'll have 
5 will equals 2 minus 2 cube plus 4 minus 2 square minus 3 minus 2 plus k. 5 will equals minus 2 cube is minus 8 and minus 8 times 2 is minus 16. Minus 2 square is 4. 4 times 4 is plus 16. Minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 6 plus k. So this is gone. You subtract 5 from 6 from both sides. We'll have that k will be 5 minus 6, which is minus 1. Therefore, the equation we are looking for, the equation of the curve will be 2sq plus 4x squared minus 3x minus 1. This is the equation we are looking for. C says differentiate y equals 3x squared plus 4x minus 5 with respect to x. So remember our differentiation formula. If y is equal to x to power n, y dy dx is n subtract 1 from the power. So if we apply that here, we have dy dx will be 2 times 3 is 6x subtract 1. Is 1 plus there's 1 here 4 times 1 times 4 is 4 x to the power 0 and the first constant is 0 x to the power 0 is 1 so it is 6x plus 4. Question 9 says given that A is this matrix and B is this 3 by 3 matrix evaluate 3A minus 2B. So we have 3, our A is 3, 2, minus 1, 1, 0, 1, 2, minus 2, 0, minus 2, 4, 2, minus 3, 3, minus 1, 1, 0, minus 2, 2. So this 3 have to multiply every entry inside. So we have 9, 6 minus 3, 3, 0, 3, 6 minus 6, 0, minus. These two have to multiply every entry likewise. 8, 4, minus 6, 6, minus 2, minus 2, 0, minus 4, 4. So if we subtract these two matrices, we have to subtract the corresponding entry. So this first entry subtract this first entry, second entry subtract the second entry, likewise the rest. 9 minus 8 is 1, 6 minus 4 is 2, minus 3 minus minus 6, so minus 3 plus 6 is 3, 3 minus 6 is minus 3, 0 minus plus 2 is 2, 3 plus 2 is 5, 6 minus 0 is 6, minus 6 plus 4 is minus 2, 0 minus 4 is minus 4. So the second problem says we should find the determinant of this matrix. So this is determinant of 1, 2, 3, minus 3, 2, 6 minus 2 minus 4. So, determinant of this matrix, as usual, this first row multiply the corresponding sub matrix. So, 1 multiplies, if you delete this column and this row, we take the determinant of the remaining matrix 2, 5, minus 2, minus 4, minus. 2. If we delete this column and this row, we take the determinant of these two matrices. Minus 3, 5, 6, minus 4, plus 3. If we delete this row and this column. This row and this column, we take the determinant of this matrix. 3, 2, 6, minus 2. 
So the determinant of this is 1 minus 8, you know, minus this, so plus 10, minus 2, 12, minus 30, plus 3, 6, minus 12. And if we do that, 10 minus 8 is 2, minus 2, 12 minus 30 is minus 18, plus 3 times 6 minus 12 is minus 6. So we have 2 plus 36 minus 18. So this is 38 minus 18. So this will be 20. So the determinant is 20. B says Mr. Tony took a loan of 120,000 Naira at 12% per annum compound interest to buy a piece of land. If he paid the loan in three years, what was the total amount paid? Remember that formula for amount for compound interest is principal times 1 plus R over 100 raised to the power number of years. And so the principal is 120,000. 1 plus 12 over 100 raised to the power 3 years. And if we add this, this will be 120,000. 1 plus this is 1 point 12 by 3. And if we multiply this, we'll have 168,591.36. So this is the amount he's going to pay back after three years. Question two says, find his profit if he later sold the land for three fifty thousand that he bought at one twenty thousand without incurring any additional expenses. So his profit will be three fifty thousand minus the amount he paid back. Profit will be three fifty thousand minus 168,591.36 which is 181,408.64 so this is profit question 10 is an interesting question it says a bucket full of water is 40 cm in diameter in the open end 40, 24 cm in diameter at the bottom end and 36 cm deep. The bucket is then emptied completely into a cylindrical drum of 56 cm in diameter. Find the level of water in the drum to the nearest whole number. Let's sketch it so we get a picture. So this is the bucket. So 40 cm in diameter at the open end. So this is 40 cm, so that the radius is 20 cm and 24 cm at the bottom, so the radius is 12 cm and the height is 36 cm deep. This water is now emptied into a drum that is of cylindrical shape and the diameter of the drum is 56 cm so that the radius will be 28 cm. We are asked to look for the level of water in the drum, which is simply the height. The height of the water inside this drum. So the first thing we will look at is to find the volume of water inside this frost room. This is a frost room and this is a cylinder. This is a frost room. This is a cylinder. What is the volume of a frost room? There are telling formulas we can use to get the volume of a frost room. The first one, which is the one that takes time, is to find the volume of the complete cone because a frost room is gotten from a cone and subtract the volume of the smaller cone. 
So if we complete this, we we'll find the volume of the big cone minus volume of the smaller cone. We get the volume of this first room. And but that will take a longer process. We have two different formulas for it. So the two formulas are that volume is pi h over 3 r square for the big radius, r r plus r square for the small radius, or volume is pi small h over 3 r cube minus r cube over 3, where this h is the height of the smaller cone, whereas this h is the height of this first room. So let's use this formula to make it easier for us. So we we'll have 22 over 7 times height is 36. There's 3 here. Our big radius is 20 square plus 20 times 12 plus 12 square. 3 can cancel 36 as 12. As so 22 times 12. We we'll have 264 over 7. Inside the bracket, we we'll have 400 plus 240 plus 144. So, if we sum it up, this is 264 over 7 times 784. 7 can divide this 112 times and 264 times 112 will be 29,568 cm cube. So this is the volume of water that was poured into the drum of cylindrical shape. Now we are going to look for the height of this water inside the cylindrical shape. So we know that volume of a cylinder is pi r square h. This volume is the same as 29.568. Pi is 22 over 7. The radius of the cylinder is 28. And the height is what we are looking for. 7 can cancel 28 four times. And so if we multiply, we have 29.568 equals 2.464 h. So if we divide both sides by 2464, four, we'll have that h is 12 cm, so the nearest one number. The question 11 says, using ruler and a pair of compasses only, construct a triangle ABC such that AB is 5 cm, AC is 7 cm, and BAC, and BAC is 120 degrees. The locus LO1 of points equidistant from A and C. I, I, the locus LO2 of point 4.5 cm from C. I, C says locate the point of intersection N1 and N2 of the loci LO1 and LO2. And this is measure N1, N2. And I, I measure line BC. I'm going to do this construction without the tools. I don't have the tools with me, but I'm going to explain it in a way that you will understand it. Construction was one of the interesting topics I enjoyed far back in secondary school, but a decade plus ago. We have to construct a triangle, A, B, C. First of all, let's sketch it. It is good you have a sketch of what you want to draw. So it's good you put the longer side at the base. So if this is your base, the angle at, and here's my A, here's my C, 7 cm. Angle B, A, C, B is here. B, A, C is 120 degrees. So 120 degrees will, will look like this. So this is 120 degrees. And so we have to join this here. This is B. AB is 5 cm. The locus L1 of points equidistance from A and C is the line 
that divide A and C into two equal parts. So I have to get a line. The locus LO2 of point 4.5 cm from C is you, you put your pair of compass at C, we measure 4.5 cm and draw a circle. This is a circle. We draw a circle. Let's say the circle is this. So this is LO2. This is LO1. So let's go. So since we want our angle to be here, we have to shift it to this place. So you take your pair of compass, place it at this point. You measure with your pair of compass, you measure 7 cm. When you measure 7 cm, let's say this is your 7 cm. So here is A, here is C. So this is your 7 cm. The next thing we'll do is to get the angle BAC 120 degree. If you take your pair of compass, take any radius, you draw a circle. Without adjusting the circle, you place the pin here, you got an arc. This is 120 degrees. From this is 60, this is 120 degrees. And so after cutting an arc, you draw a line from this center through this point where the arc is, draw it out. To know where this will stop, you take your pair of compass, you measure it at your ruler, you measure 5 cm since line A, B is 5 cm. When you measure 5 cm, you place it here, you draw the line, so you have to adjust it to this point. And therefore, you have to join B to C. So this is our B. This is 120 degrees. This is 5 cm. And so, next thing we'll do is to get the locus L1 of point equidistance from A and C. The locus is a straight line that divides this line AC. For us to get it, take your pair of compass, place the pin here, make sure it exceeds the center. You draw an arc, draw an arc at the middle and send back behind. You place it here again without adjusting, you cut, you cut, and then join these two lines together. So when you join these two lines, this is what we call L1, locus L1 of point. The next is locus L2 of point 4.5 cm from C. This is a circle. So you place your pair of compass here. You measure 4.5 cm and you draw a circle of radius 4.5 cm. If you draw the circle, the circle will look like. So this is how the circle will look like. And so we we'll call this locus L2 of point. The circle should locate N1 and N2 where they meet. So this is N1. This is N2. And so we are going to measure this line with our ruler. We measure this. When you measure it, you put what the line is. So D is for measurement. Line N1. N2. So if we measure it with a ruler, and if we measure N1, N2, we have 6 cm. And II, we measure line BC, we have 10.5 cm. So you place your ruler here, measure this, you get 10.5 cm. Question 2 says the scores of students in a biology test in a particular school are given as this. If the mean score is 18, find the value of 2x, the mean deviation, and the standard deviation. So we use the mean formula. The mean formula says summation of the axis of the frequency. And so we are giving the mean as 18. We sum 
the values there are 12 plus x plus 15 plus 2x plus 25 plus 12 plus 30 plus 15 plus 25 plus 12 plus 16 plus 12. How many of them? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Over 12. So if we multiply 12 by 18, we will have 216. And if we sum this up, x plus 2x is 3x, and the rest is 174. Subtract 174 from both sides, 216 minus 174 equals 3x. We have 42 equals 3x. Divide both sides by 3. We have that x is 14. So that our a, which is the value of 2s, 2x will be 2 times 14, which is 28. Next, we'll look for the mean deviation and the standard deviation. We have to draw a table. And in our table, our first values will be the x, the next will be the frequencies. Next will be, since we have gotten our mean, we will have x minus x bar. Then we will find, so we are going to put our x's in ascending order. The smallest is 12. We have x minus x bar square. And therefore, we will look for f of x minus x bar and f of x minus x bar square. So 12 appears 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 times. Fourteen appears one times. Fifteen appears one, two, two times. 16 appears 1 times, 25 appears 2 times, 28 appears 1 times, and 30 appears 1 times. If we sum this, we should have 12. 4, 5, 7, 8, 10, 12. Correct. So, x minus x bar, our x bar is our mean, which is 18. 12 minus 18 is minus 6. A minus 6 square is 36. 4 times absolute value of this is 24. And 4 times 36 is 1 for 4. The next is 14. 14 minus 18 is 4. Minus 4. Minus 4 square is 16. 1 times 1 times 4 is 4, and 1 times 16 is 16. 15 minus 18 is minus 3. Minus 3 squared is 9. 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times 9 is 18. 16 minus 18 is minus 2. Minus 2 square is 4. 1 times 2 is 2. And 1 times 4 is 4. 25 minus 18 is 7. 7 square is 49. 2 times 7 is 14. And 2 times 49 is 98. 28 minus 18 is 10. 10 square is 100. 1 times 10 is 10. And 1 times 100 is 100. And finally, 30 minus 18 is 12. 12 square is 144. 4. 1 times 12 is 12. 1 times 144 4 is 144. 4. 
our summation of f is 12. And so if we sum this, we we'll have sum of f x minus x bar. We we'll have this as 72. And if we sum this, we we'll have sum of f x minus x bar square. We we'll have this as 524. So to find the mean deviation B, mean deviation, the formula says summation of f x minus x bar over n. So this would be 72 number of the frequency is 12 over 12, and if we divide it, this is 6. And C, the standard deviation, the formula is summation of f of x minus x bar all square over n, and that's square root. So this will be, when we sum this, this is 524 over 12. We divide this will be square root of 43.66. If we take the square root, we have 6.607, approximately 6.6. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like this video, share it, and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.